What's up, everybody? This is Rob of Archangel Inc., www.archangelinc.com. And today, I am happy to have with us the Archangel Inc. marketing chief, marketing guru, Mr. Jordan Ring here in this video. What's up, guys? <laughs> yes, please, Jordan, introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm Jordan. Uh, I, like Rob said, I work with uh, the marketing side of Archangel Inc. and all that stuff. I also have my own website, www.jmring.com. Uh, just my website where I blog and stuff too. But I also do stuff on Archangel Inc. Uh, with their blog and website and all that stuff. So it's all good. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. So in this video, I want to talk about book launch marketing. Now, cool. Jordan is our uh, marketing person, and he released a book recently called Book Launch Gladiator, and that's kind of the basis. There it is, Book Launch Gladiator. <laughs> Perfect. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about and share, because that's a question that we get a lot from from authors, uh, people who send us inquiries. Hey, maybe I have a book already. I'm thinking about writing a book. How do I figure out how to find readers, how to actually make sales, how to do whatever this book is uh, trying to do? How do I do whatever it is that I want this book to do? How do I actually make that happen? And so I wanted to have Jordan on to talk about Book Launch Gladiator a little bit and talk about some of the strategies and tactics that, he, that he's seen and employed so let's start off, Jordan. We you have a, had a brief in, introduction, but uh, tell us more about yourself, if you would. Yeah, sure. As Rob said, I wrote this book right here, Book Launch Gladiator. Uh, you can get it in the print version, um, Kindle version, or even the audiobook version too. Um, I wrote it just because, as an author, I've struggled myself with this whole where to find readers, and I think that's. You know, you, there's so many resources out there on writing and publishing. Uh, you know, if you follow the right tactics, you can get a book out there. Uh, it's not easy, but it, there's very good processes you can follow that are out there. But from what I have seen, there's not a lot uh, processes on actually launching a book. So I decided to write that book. But more about me, I am an authorpreneur. That's a, I like that little word mix there because I do a lot of writing, uh, but I also fancy myself as an entrepreneur uh, and then a freelancer as well. So I do work from home. Uh, I do all my work from home. Definitely enjoy that. Recently started that at the end of last year. So it's still somewhat new, uh, but definitely enjoying it. Just doing different freelancing jobs online, uh, mostly for Archangel Inc. But whenever I'm not doing stuff for Archangel Inc, I am doing uh, other stuff on Upwork and uh, on those platforms as well. Yeah, and you you also do some work through your website as well. Um, you can feel free to to share a little bit about that if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Uh, my website is www.jmring.com. I do some blogging on there. Uh, you can also get different services uh, from me on there as well. But mostly, it's just to help people try to navigate, um, you know, the beginnings of their author careers. Because uh, I'm not you know, a New York Times bestselling author. And I even talk about that in the book. I'm just an average dude who decided to write a book one day I said, Hey, that would be cool. Let me write a book. So I wrote a memoir called the action diet, basically just on my struggle to lose weight. Uh, and then I've written several books since then. And I've just kind of navigated the field of book launching and marketing and trying to figure all that out when it's not easy. When people tell you just to send an email to your list, you can't do that if you don't have a list. <laughs> You can't do that if you don't already have an audience. So what about people that want to write their books and don't necessarily have an audience? So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm passionate about and what I'm really uh, you know, happy to work with people on. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I know the email marketing, email list building is pretty central to what a lot of authors and author coaches and those kind of folks talk about. Yes. And it's a, it's a really good uh, niche to, to focus on because not everybody has that and there's there's a, a number of different uh, ideas circulating, I guess, and, and approaches that one could take. Um, and if you're starting out from ground zero, you don't necessarily know what the best strategy is going to be in your case. So I think that's awesome. I also want to mention, maybe you're a little modest or not, but uh, Jordan also has a podcast, uh, oh, which yeah, is which is that. really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to talk about that if you'd like, Jordan. No, I've actually had you and Christy on. Christy is the um, publishing coordinator at Archangel Inc. I had Rob and Christy on the show. Uh, my wife and I run a podcast called Freedom Cast. We have a new episode uh, that comes out every week. We just talk about uh, just how to live a little bit differently. So we talk about the fact that I work from home. Uh, we talked about the fact that 
you know, we got, when we got married five and a half years ago, we spent a thousand dollars on our wedding and that was it. We talk about things like that. That's just to try to try to live a little bit differently. We don't ever want to live like, uh, you know, we're being told that's kind of what our thing is. So right that's on. just a brief intro to that. You can, you can also find out about that uh, on my website. That's probably the most exciting thing uh, that I do. Um, definitely enjoy, enjoy that. Enjoy just talking about things because it's different. Normally I'm writing about things uh, and doing that and communicating through email. So podcast is just another medium to, you know, interact with people. So it's pretty cool. Cool. Right on. Well, thanks. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's jump right in. We've talked about Book Launch Gladiator a little bit. Tell me about, uh, tell me about the book. What, what are the main points? What's it about? You know, anything that you want to share? Because I'm imagining that the folks who are watching this, listening to this are uh, perhaps in that position. They are starting out and they want to figure out how to market their book and how can this book help them? Yeah, sure. I, and, and like I said, I wrote it because like, like exactly what you said, there are a lot of people out there that are thinking, Hey, I want to write a book. Um, I'm kind of interested in the process and I'm getting there, but how do I, how do I do it? How do I market my book and how do I find the right, right audience? Um, really what my book focuses on is first and foremost, the book launch, but also the timeline behind that. Uh, that was the one thing that lacked most when I was trying to find research on how to launch a book there would be all kinds of different pieces of advice, but there would be nothing out there that would say, you should do this and then this and then this. So I kind of like, I tried to formulate a plan in here. Now, of course, I, I mentioned things like certain things in here might not work with certain genres. Um, there, there's never really going to be a one size fits all book launch <laughs> marketing plan. Yeah. Um, but this is a very general approach to a very complicated issue. And I've tried to kind of, break it down in, I have four different phases. Uh, it's the pre-launch phase, the launch phase, uh, the review phase, and then the post-launch phase. Basically, you need to get all, all of those phases right. Uh, most importantly, the pre-launch, making sure you have the book set up for success. That's a lot of what a lot of people uh, and authors miss. They wanna say, how do I market my book? when they might not necessarily have the greatest <laughs> book. So I yeah. definitely focus on that, making sure that you know, I, I definitely tell authors to make sure they're putting a good book out there uh, and then the rest of it will kind of follow. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. I like, um, I like that point. That's a big emphasis for Archangel Inc. as well. Now there are, you, know, you can certainly make money selling books that are kind of hastily put together and oh, sure. people you do. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but the, the goal, at least for, for us, has always been, look, we want people who are in it for the long term, uh, people who believe in it, who yeah. respect their readers, respect their clients, their customers, and really want to provide some, some good value, whether that's storytelling and just something that's going to captivate them and take them to a different place for a while, or something that's you know, nonfiction and actionable, it's going to help them live a healthier, wealthier, more successful, more satisfying life, whatever it is, um, getting, those, getting those details right and really not shortchanging things or cutting corners uh, that that um, you might be inclined to or that other authors might be inclined to um, is, well, going to be one, good for, for your karma and kind of for your soul, but also um, good, hopefully. Important things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But good, hopefully, also in the long term for distinguishing yourself because a lot of those fly-by-night sort of um, projects will, will fly by night and you won't have any uh, persistence or, or long-term value out of them. So, um, really focusing on getting something that's going to have that that value and that um, uh, long term impact is a nice uh, nice strategy and a good way to distinguish yourself. Yes, it's cool. Okay, so let's see. Um, you kind of overlapped a little bit. The tell us about your target demographic and and what the goal is from this book. Somebody takes it, they read it, they purchase it, and um, what is it that you're hoping that they're going to get out of it? Uh, I'm hoping that they can just have a better understanding of the whole atmosphere of book marketing and book launching in general. Now, certainly I would love to, you know, have people sign up with us and have us help them, but that's not what the purpose of the book is. And I definitely mentioned that in here. Uh, Archangel Inc. helps with a lot of the processes in here, especially book marketing, because that's, you know, that's what I do. Um, so that's, that's one of my hopes is that we can help people who might be struggling. Uh, but I also share different tips and strategies that people can kind of DIY, do it themselves too, or DIY, do it, no, DIY, there we go, I got it. <laughs> do it yourself, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> got it, yeah, but no. Yeah, I, 
Please, Go ahead. sir. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I think that um, one, of the, one of the things I really appreciated about this book, um, as well as the, the response has been from, you know, organic reviewers on, on Amazon, has been the, well, I would say people, people point out that, yes, there is, there is a mention of what you do. And, and obviously, this is, you know, kind of part of our entrepreneurial offering. But, um, but it's really actionable on its own. And, you know, you can get all this information for free. The reason the, you know, paid services and that kind of thing exist is for people who say, hey, look, that sounds really good. Um, it seems like you know what you're talking about. I don't want anything to do with it. I, I exactly. would just as easily, you know, cut a check and, and let you handle it. Um, I trust your expertise. I trust your um, integrity and honesty. Uh, again, it seems like you have a good grasp of it. Go ahead, have fun, make, make my book as successful as you can. And, um, and that's something that, that Alex Goldstein mentioned in um, uh, Publish to Sell, Long-Term Income from Short-Term Effort. I think we did an audiobook of it. I also mentioned it in the starting chapter of The Published Professional, which uh, was released not too long ago. But um, you know, his point is be really transparent about the process and talk about what's involved. And don't be afraid so much that other people are going to steal your process or that they're going to, um, uh, you know, basically just not work for you as a result. He said, because the people who, who are not willing to pay for your services um, and who are going to, you know, try and do it yourself based on whatever transparent information that you provide them, they weren't going to be your target customers anyway. They were going yeah. to buy from you regardless of what happened. But the people who are, going to be interested in actually outsourcing it and having somebody who is familiar with the process walk them through it, um, those people are going to be buttressed and supported by the fact that you are totally transparent and you really outline uh, from A to Z what's involved in what you do. I think it, it's also a good demonstration of the value that you bring. You can say, listen, here, here's what it is. And, and you determine whether you know, what I'm charging uh, is going to be worth it to you. you know, is it worth it for you to cut a check for you know, X number of dollars um, and go through uh, and have somebody who's already gone through that process do it? Or, you know, is it better for me to spend that money um, learning how to do it myself? Is there something else I could be doing with my time and energy that's going to be better spent than hiring somebody uh, who is familiar and professional and all of that? Um, you know, and that's for the individual customer and client to, to determine. So, you know, and that's, that's sort of how I try to operate business. Look, you know, this, we charge what we charge and, you know, it's because we, we are familiar with the process, we are um, experienced with it, and you're paying for that expertise. You can certainly bootstrap that experience, but um, it is going to take some time and energy and effort on your part. If it's worth it for you, great. If it's not, we're happy to help. So that's kind of how um, I approach it. And I think that's been the reception so far to what you've, you've described. Um, people really like that it is actionable. And for those DIY kind of folks, the the Book Launch Gladiator does outline something that is um, helpful and constructive to them. Yeah, and I appreciate you saying that because that's definitely a big, that was a big like, you know, part of my purpose in writing the book. Because, uh, and I, I think I, I even share in there too, like, I don't know how well you can see this, but like, this is a really, really nice book cover. I would never be able to do this. I am not a designer. So I think it's really and I try to be real with people and say there are certain parts of the process that you may be great. If you're an editor, you might be able to do your own book edit. I don't talk much about editing, but I just use that as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a really good proofreader, yeah, you can proofread your book. I read this book five times through myself and missed a lot. So I'm not <laughs> that great of a proofreader either. So there's certain parts of the process of authorpreneurship in general that you're not going to be great at. Like I'm not going to design my own book covers. Um, for the most part, I'm not going to do my own formatting. Now I've tried that and I still can't make it look as good as, you know, you guys can, <laughs> members of our team can do it. Archangel Inc. It just really depends on how, how you, how much of it you want to do yourself. So it's exactly what you were saying. If you, uh, if you want to figure it out yourself and do it yourself, certainly there are resources out there. This book is a good start. And I actually link out to a lot of different resources that you can use to learn the whole process by yourself. But uh, a lot of things, it is just so much better just to get someone to help you with them because you got to value value your own time too. Yeah. Uh, you have to think about, do I want to spend, you know, whatever it is to get a book cover or do I want to invest in myself and get like a class and do all that stuff uh, when 
my, I know that my design skills are not that great. So I know that I'm not going to be able to get to a point where I'm going to be able to design a cover like this. I just think you, but you're totally right. You have to think of it uh, in those terms. And I try to share it in those terms as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The sort of time value of your, yes. your energy and, um, you know, kind of weighing that against whatever the, the financial outlay is going to be. If you have, if you have a high value activity that you're really good at and that you could potentially scale up and do more of that, you know, let's say it's going to bring a hundred bucks an hour or, or 500 bucks an hour or something. Um, and you can do that for, you know, an hour or a handful of hours and make enough money to pay somebody else to do what it would take you maybe 20 or 30 hours, then you're better off spending those 20 or 30 hours yes. doing your highest value activity. Yes. So, um, you know, that's, that's the whole idea. There's another book, audio book that we did a while ago called uh, Delegate and Dominate. And uh, it's about outsourcing and kind of building your mm -hmm. business that way. And um, uh, <laughs> despite the way it sounds, it's not about um, dominating those you're delegating <laughs> to. <and> dominate. <laughs> Not about delegating uh, or dominating your subordinates, but it's about um, getting that competitive advantage, you know, being yeah. able to really use your time wisely, find people who can use their time wisely and, and collaboratively and, you know, syncretically put something together that's going to be really effective and efficient and, um, and powerful and persuasive and, and all of those things that you want it to be so that you're going to be competitive on the market. So yep. cool. Um, okay. So Tell me a little bit about the process of writing this book, if you would, uh, for, for those sure. out there. Yeah, I think, uh, definitely start with an outline. Uh, and I know how some people can be like, oh, I don't want to do an outline. That's how I was when I was in high school and college. People would say do an outline and be like, that's just an extra step. But no, it really makes a big difference if you can write an outline. Luckily for me, I actually had already had done an online course on this material. So I basically just used that course to create the outline. Uh, and then I just wrote it from there. I was actually, because I had an outline, I was actually able to write this entire book in one week, which yeah. I was very proud of just because I was able to focus and do that. But it's just, it just, you know, it speaks to the, um, I don't know if viability is the right word, but it speaks to the effectiveness of having uh, an outline and just some, just knowing what you're talking about so that when you go to write, you're pretty much just writing, you're writing from what you already know. You're just getting the content out there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's, that's often what, what writing coaches say, you know, if you can, if you can write the way you speak and, you know, kind of write what you know, um, it often makes for effective, engaging, compelling reading, as opposed to the sort of writerly voice that sometimes people are in, inclined to make. Uh, I know that's something that I think about as well. And, yep. um, you know, a lot of people I think struggle with that. So um, I think that's cool. I, that was, that was awesome. I remember when you mentioned that you uh, put this book together in a week and uh, it was almost like um, you know, a truncated version of uh, NaNoWriMo. Um, for people who don't know what that is, that's National Novel Writing Month. I think it's in the fall I've heard sometime. Of, I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah, it's like October or maybe November or September, whatever it was. <laughs> but, um, but basically you have, you have X number of days and many, many people try and put together a novel uh, during that period. And so, you know, this was uh, like uh, national or, or individual um, nonfiction writing week. And um, yeah, I thought that was, um, that was cool and interesting and distinctive. And like you said, is a, is a testament to the power of one, knowing your content and two, having that outline because you basically just create a, uh, a template to fill in afterward. You already know what all the details are and you've already conceived of, of the direction that it's going to go yeah. in. So um, for people out there, sometimes we get questions on how can I be a better writer? How can I um, be more effective at creating um, uh, creating content and, and that kind of thing? Um, think about outlining. Think about doing that. I mean, there are other strategies as well. Write on a continual basis. Read a lot. Um, follow, pay attention to the, the subtle tactics of, of um, writers and creators that you like and try and reverse engineer them in a way, figure out, okay, yeah, what do they do that, that worked really well there? Why did I like this? You know, having, having a callback, let's say you have a, a story at the start of it and then you mention it later in the book and, and it kind of has that callback effect and people mm -hmm. all of a sudden remember the whole thing. You know, all these little tips and tactics and strategies that, that good writers employ, you know, those are, um, those are good to pay attention to. Um, outlining, like you said, is is yep. really effective uh, for a lot of writers. Obviously, not everybody. Some people they just get uh, inspired and uh, <laughs> they have their muse speak to them, and it is what it is, and it comes out great. But um, but the more systematic you can make it, um, in many cases, especially as you're starting out, uh, the the simpler it might be. 
So super cool. Yeah, and I just thought of this too, Rob. I wanted to add. I think, please, uh, just another big hold hold up for authors. Like, I I could have been I could have been stuck in the mode where I'm like, I'm not going to write this book until I have years and years and years of experience, you know, under my mm-hmm. belt. But I really think you. I adamantly believe you don't have to be an expert, so to say, in a subject to write a book about it. Um, there's probably something, and you know, for listeners out there and watchers of this uh, video, um, you know, there, there's most, there's definitely something that you know very well, um, and your your ability to approach that subject in a different kind of way uh, is the differentiating factor for you. Now, I my differentiating factor for Book Launch Gladiator was just to kind of create a fun book on the whole process and to just kind of uh you know make it in like package form and this is how you do it like this is the this is the guideline for that uh, instead of just a book of random strategies but like i think anyone out there i and i firmly believe everyone has a book in them there's something that you do that you're passionate about or that you happen to be really good at good at uh, that you can write a book about but don't let that like don't let that feeling of i'm not an expert yet or I don't know enough about this subject yet to, to stop you. Uh, what do you think about that, Rob? Yeah, I actually, I like that. I mean, I'm of, of um, both minds. I can understand that perspective because there is something to be yeah. said for, for um, you know, the credibility that comes through experience and, sure. and the, the nuance mm-hmm. and um, the refinement of your insight. And, and so, you know, <laughs> the, um, the, the high school graduate who has never invested before writing a book on, on day trading, you know, maybe they don't have as much credibility <laughs> uh, as, yeah. as you might like. But um, on the other hand, Very I think counter example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, on the other hand, I think I think you are accurate, and there is something to be said for uh, describing something with almost the beginner's mind, especially if you're transparent about it. If it is something that you are engaged with, but let's say recently you learned to uh, to play guitar, and you've never you know you've never played guitar before. This is you know guitar playing for the the total music novice for the non instrument player, and and you write about it, oftentimes you're closer to that experience for, yes. for the novice exactly. than, than either the natural or the person who's been playing for 20 or 40 years or something. They may, um, they may not remember what it's like to just pick up a guitar for the first time and not know what the strings are, you know, or not know, um, you know, I don't know, how to, um, how to use a, a guitar pick, for example. So having... Having that beginner's mind, I mean, I've actually seen some some authors recommend that as a way. It's like, okay, if you're if you're thinking about future projects and content, think about individual things that you're trying to learn, things that you are yeah. uh, hoping to become better at. Go through that process, document it, uh, you know, document questions along the way that you have, and then figure out what the answers are uh, mm-hmm. that you discovered, and then you can outline them, and and you can kind of provide almost a meta. Uh, narrative on the process of learning a new skill, uh, the process of becoming familiar with something that was unfamiliar to you before, and and outline almost the uh, the mental approach that's involved in in navigating a new terrain. You know, mapping a new territory, turning um, what is sort of formless chaos into some degree of order, and and that's really um, I think that can be a really effective way to to write the book uh, or write a book. Um, and again, you know, if it's done in the spirit of transparency of, Hey, yeah, you know, I'm not pretending to be, um, I don't know. That's super important. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not pretending to be the wolf of wall street and you know, I have, I have a billion dollars that I've made and lost. Uh, but you're like, Hey, what, how do I learn about, you know, maybe you can be at the same high schooler and say, how do I learn about day trading? you know, from, from a novice perspective without a, a financial background and, and you start reading about it and, and here are all the books that I read. Here's the salient information that I gathered. This is yeah. what I, I learned from it. Um, that can have value in it uh, in itself because basically you're consolidating and condensing what maybe for you was weeks, months, years of, of study and tutorial into something that's digestible in a few hours. And if you can do that for somebody, they can save those weeks, months, and years of their own time uh, simulate it in a few hours and, um, and have that as their jumping off point for whatever they learn next. Yep. So, um, yeah, I do, I do think that that's, um, that's cool that you mentioned that. And it's good, uh, good thing to keep in mind for writers out there. You can write books, even if you don't, um, even if you aren't sure yet that, that you have the expertise or credentials, you know, approach it honestly, transparently and, and with humility. And, uh, you may find that you actually have a lot to offer. 
Yeah. And I get that in a lot of my, and I, I appreciate that from book reviewers too. They say, Hey, like you were honest about, and you were transparent about like, mm-hmm. you know, fact A, fact B. I think that's just, I mean, writing in general, I think that's a great writing tip in general, just to be, be transparent with where you're at. Now, if you had 25 years of experience on wall street, then certainly say that certainly say you have this, like all this, but if you've only done it for six months, it might be important to say that you don't want to mislead people. You don't want to say that they're right. going to make a million dollars uh, when you've only made a hundred. I think that's, right. that's where like, yeah, that's where the level of experience and the differentiating, you know, factors can be. It's just, some, I think transparency is the best way to, to tackle that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Okay. So, so let's, um, Let's summarize uh, Book sure. Launch Gladiator. Is there, um, is there a single nugget, a little bit of information, summary idea, anything like that that you want to share uh, that people can take away? Maybe they weren't familiar with before. Maybe they're not exposed to it before. Something that you'd like to share with them from the book that gives a little bit of a, of a sense of what they can expect if they do check it out. Sure. I, I have two. And these are the things I think are probably two of the most important things that I talk about in this book. And we've, uh, I think we may have hit, hit on them a little bit, but number one is plan, planning. It's planning the launch. Uh, it's getting, getting yourself organized for everything. Cause you're going to have to do a lot of different steps along the way. Uh, and if you don't have a single place that you can go to, to kind of keep that all together, whether that's a Google doc, whether that's a Google spreadsheet, or whether it's a Trello board, which I actually share in the book, I share a link to a sample one. Uh, You can get that if you want, jmring.com slash book launch gladiator free bonus, if you can remember that. Uh, Or you can just get the book and it's in the beginning as well. But you don't have to get that. You can actually make your own board on Trello. Uh, But I have found that as far as organizing a launch, it's the way to go. You can make, it's just, and you can do it all in a spreadsheet. Uh, but this just helps you keep everything in one place. It helps you keep your book files uh, as a link. It helps you keep your um, your book link in general and every other link and step along the way. So regardless of how you do it, you definitely want to plan uh, and plan at least a month in advance of your launch, preferably earlier. Preferably you want to be <laughs> planning marketing and launching as soon as you are figuring out your title of your book because that's one of the most important things. Mm-hmm. Um, so plan as early as you can and then just keep, keep it organized. Uh, I think that's super important. Uh, and secondly, it's not to get discouraged by whatever your sales end up being. Uh, and the, the way to not get discouraged is to set a reasonable goal for yourself. Um, when I wrote my, and I, and this was, I talked from experience cause I wrote my first book and I was like, yeah, it's going to be a bestseller. Like I'm doing all this stuff. I'm, I have this process. Like, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to retire on this one book. And that's not like, it's not realistic. And I, I wouldn't have told anyone that, but like, I definitely was, you know, I was hoping for that. And I think a lot of authors are because it's maybe number one, because you're putting so much time into it. But then number two, as a beginning author, you're going to be spending more money too, because you're going to be getting help along the way. um, At least in some fashion, you're not going to be able to do it all of your, all yourself um, for the most part. Some people might be able to, Uh, but mostly you're going to get help. So just don't get discouraged. Uh, And the way to do that is to set clear goals about what you want uh, your book to do. Whether you you want to sell a hundred books or whether you want to grow your list by a hundred or 200, I think it's just important to, uh, to set goals early on, or you're just going to end up being disappointed. You're going to end up thinking that the book was a failure um, when it may not have been. Yeah. I think that's, that's an awesome point. You know, recognizing, that success happens across multiple categories and and you can think a little bit laterally about what su- what constitutes success now if you have a single focus on book sales then then that's one metric of success and, and maybe that's what you mm-hmm. put all of your energy toward or like you said maybe you want to build your email list or maybe you want to you know get a hundred reviews or get a dozen reviews or get five reviews or get a single review whatever it is um having having a sense of uh, what you'd like to accomplish that as you mentioned is reasonable is realistic um, and then using those as benchmarks uh, on which yes. to, to judge your um, your successes and failures, I think is really is really key. You know, and then just taking some time to think about what is it actually that I want out of this book, and and not some nebulous, yeah, not some nebulous. Um, hey, I want to I don't want to retire on this. I want to you know sit on the beaches of Panama and sipping Mai Tais or something like, I mean, maybe you want that. And, okay, cool. But, um, you know, something it's not impossible. It's just no. not like, it's not likely. And I think yeah. a lot of, a lot of companies and, and 
I think it wasn't necessarily all my fault that I believe that because a lot of companies will try to pull you in and say like, and pr promise you all these things. And I know that's something we're transparent about at Archangel Inc. It's like, Hey, have a goal, have a reasonable goal, but be reasonable about what this book, like you just said, what's this book going to do for you? Right. It's not going to, it's not going to help you retire to and drink Mai Tais all day. It's just most <laughs> likely not. Now, like I said, it's always possible, but it's just, it's just good to be realistic and because it helps you, it helps you stay the course. It helps you, you know, write more books and eventually stack up and right. Yeah. Safe. Yeah. Be, be more uh, effective at providing something that is going to, pr uh, going to offer sustained value to people for which yeah. they want to, to compensate you. They want you to keep doing whatever great thing it is that you're doing. And so, um, that's, that's the whole, that's the idea behind payment. Obviously, like, you know, we don't have to think about that every time we make a, a cash transaction, but, but ultimately it's, it's, um, other people and society's way of um, encouraging certain types of actions and behaviors from you. Yep. They say, hey, you're really um, good at this. You are providing a gift to the world in whatever it is that you're doing. And we know that you need to eat and keep the lights on. And we want you to keep doing that. And this is, this is the uh, arrangement. This is how yes. it happens. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's good. Yeah. And then just setting that goal because, you know, in some, in some cases, you, you have a goal or you don't have a goal and then you don't know if you've succeeded or failed. Like you exactly. don't know. Yeah, that's another big thing too. Yeah. You, you don't know if you don't know what you're shooting for, you don't know whether to judge yourself as having gotten closer or further from, you know, whatever yeah. it is that you want. And then maybe you have uh, some emotional distress over it. And you're like, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know if I should feel on the one hand, X, Y, and Z happened, but A, B, and C didn't. And, you know, well, if you, if you outline beforehand that, X is going to be important. A is going to be important and Y and Z are irrelevant. Okay. Then you know that and that's good. Yep. Yep. Cool. Uh, all right, Jordan. So let's wrap this up and sure. let people know how they can how, reach you, how they can find out more, how they can access the book, how they can become better book launch gladiators for themselves. Uh, you can either get, actually you can get, yeah, you can get my book on Amazon. Uh, that's just to type in book launch gladiator into Amazon. Uh, or if you want, you can get that by going to archangelink.com. Uh, Rob and I have a combined package for our books. What are we calling it? Entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, starter package. Yep. I have entrepreneur starter pack. I will include a link down below. Yep. It's going to be archangelink.com slash entrepreneur, something like that. And, um, yeah, we will have all of the information, including links to Jordan's book down below Jordan's website and podcast, all of that. Um, and anything else that you want to share, Jordan? Yep. Uh, I do have just kind of a, a, a brief overview of what I do as far as freelancing stuff on my website. It's just www.jmring.com. Uh, and I think it's slash work with me, or you can just go to the main website. And you can find it on there as well. Uh, I list and kind of describe what I do for Archangel Inc. And then I describe what I do uh, otherwise. So if you happen to have any other, uh, any other needs that I can help you with, you can definitely check that out too. Cool. Awesome. Um, Awesome. And as always, folks who are watching this on YouTube, feel free to leave any comments. Please like, share, and uh, let us know what you think. If you have questions or things that we didn't cover that you'd like us to cover, uh, we will do our best to answer in the comments below. Jordan also has his own YouTube page, uh, which I can include a link to as well. So there's lots of good information out there. The goal of this page is to make it easy for people who are interested in learning about self-publishing, learning about Archangel Inc. and what's going on with us to, to learn, to get free resources and, um, and good information, actionable information. So let us know down below. Um, with, yeah, Rob, please. I just want to add one more PS that I just thought of uh, another, just, this is a side story. I know this is at the very end, but yeah, yeah, go I for did it. have someone recently, uh, I was able to get a client on Upwork um, for book launch services. And she said, Hey, I thought I knew you'd be good because you wrote the book on it. And <laughs> I know we say that we say, Hey, you can tell clients you wrote the book on it. You're, you know, you're the expert, but it seriously helps you get clients. Like I, I sent this book to someone uh, and the lady was like, Hey, of course, like I want to hire you. You wrote the book on it. So <laughs> that's just a, We'll just add that as a PS. It just, just that just thought just popped in my head. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a great story. And that's a great way to end it. Thank you so much, Jordan. This is Rob of Archangel Inc. www.archangelinc.com. And I will see you folks all next time.